So we've just got back to the boat after being in London with Michael's family and we're going to cruise. Yep. I had a lovely ride back on a overdue train after a cancelled train that was completely was, chock full of people. I was sweating like mad. It was the funniest train journey. It was nine o'clock at night. Our train got cancelled. The next one was delayed. So it was completely it was full. Like standing room only, but there wasn't even any standing room. George was squished on there. And in our little section outside the toilets, like it was just like this big group conversation. It was yeah, hilarious. Yeah, this lady from Singapore, she had a, a cocker spaniel and she was all enthusiastic about George. And then Gavin, who actually took some photographs that ended up being the inspiration for a movie, and that was really cool. Yeah. And, we Googled uh, him afterwards and it was, we found, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was cool. And then there was this guy who gave George half a scotch egg. You know, he's having a long commute home. And, and he saw George looking at him like, oh. Trying to eat his supper and George is giving him and a puppy dog like, uh -oh. And then we were trying to give George water but we'd forgotten his bowl so someone gave us a cup. It was, it was really great. It was a nice conversation. For an awful situation. Yeah. <laughs> we so got we, back onto the boat at about half ten and we haven't been, you know, we've been away for four nights so happy that it was still here and intact and also because it's been so hot. I think all we talk about in our videos is how hot it is. But since it had been so hot, I was just assumed my garden would have died, but it's, it survived, so I'm yeah. really happy so about that. So she's watering them in the pitch dark with me holding a phone. <laughs> and uh, Oh, and I met the largest spider I've ever seen on our boat at the back. But, it's good uh, to know, good yeah, to know. Big, big spider. So today we are going to hop a couple of moorings down to, there's a waitrose here, so we're going to moor just outside that and get some groceries because we've got nothing in the house. Do some recycling because there's a little bit of recycling there. At the waitrose. And then we've got a bunch of locks to pass through. Um, basically, we need to get to water. We need to get further from the trains. <laughs> I think it's three locks, and then a water point, and then a whole bunch of locks until we get to um, the outskirts of Hemel Hempstead where there is a Elsan and probably where we're going to moor up for the night. Okay. Somewhere, somewhere in Himalayam City area. Oh, the outskirts. And uh, partway along we pass through a couple of locks, one of which is called Sewer Lock. Nice. And that just doesn't sound <laughs> great. So. And just up here apparently there's a Canadian totem pole, which is quite funny. We should have taken your Canadian relatives to the Canadian totem pole. Yeah, we didn't find out about the Canadian totem pole until it was too late. Also, I'm not sure what a Canadian totem pole is. <laughs> That's what it says on the sign post. Yeah, but it's a, it's a, it's a totem pole from one of the First Nations. The Canadians are, are True. Canada's what the First Nations. It's kind of the people who showed up and went, where is this place? And the people and they were like, come to the village. And the people here were like, ah, it is named the village. We shall call it the village. We are the villagians. It's a long story. <laughs> four-hour mornings otherwise known as the shop and drop zone um, basically from 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. you can only stop here for four hours to run over to the Waitrose and MS and everything that are back there so we've done that Joe's gone to Waitrose and gotten some food I've dropped off some recycling I have eaten breakfast with George who is hiding behind that tree somewhere there he is there he is Nice little spot, a little bit overexposed because summer and extremely bright, but you know, there we go, a little bit darker. Right by a bridge, playground on the other side. Just over there is some trash, although we don't need that. Just over here at the Wadros is a whole recycling center. Um, no water, that's uh, three locks on, but uh, but if you're heading through for Campstead, good little spot to stop for a couple of hours and uh, do some shopping and kind of clean up and tidy. So that's good, it's been nice to get rid of our recycling. Turns out I was wrong and there is a water point here, which uh, we've already driven past and Joe's already got the lock opening, so we will not be going to that water point. Oh well.
So first lock of the day done. George waiting up there with Joe. Joe's uh, closing it up. There was a young woman and her son or uh, charge who were walking across um, before she could open the gates. I'm heading along to the next lock and Joe immediately started complaining and she was like, oh, I miss your brother. And I'm like, I miss my brother too. And then I realized she was complaining because he wasn't here to do the physical labor of moving the locks because he was good help on that. He's a big strong lad. Anyway, Joe misses you. I do too, but not for the physical labor reasons. So Michael stopped for water just back there um, and it's on the other side of the canal because the towpath and there isn't really a bridge but I stopped and got some um, black current so they should be nice to eat. just got to lock 59 and we are coming down but the water is set against us and there's a boat in the distance I've just opened the gate up and hopefully they're coming up and they're not just mooring down there um, if not I'll shut the gate and fill it for us um, but hopefully they're coming in Below lock 60. I think so. It's just been non stop locks this morning. Yeah, there's been a lot of locks. They've been fairly close together. Um, They've all been set against us apart from the last one. Yeah. We had to stop for some water at a water point that happened to be right beside a Greg, so I went and got a vegetable um, sort of cake and some yum yums, and that was nice. But um, I accidentally squirted myself with a whole bunch of water because their nozzle was not working very well. He was ever so grumpy. Ever so grumpy. Uh, Joe went back at the same time and got a bunch of blackberries, which we just had for lunch, so that was nice. We didn't have all of them, but we had a lot of them. They're really, they're quite sour, but really nice. And because they're free, they just taste really good. Yeah. <laughs> and we went past that boat that had sunk, which was a bit sad, so we didn't film it. Yeah. <laughs> and it, had leaked. it was like completely sunk. Engine room was full of water all the way to the top. There was diesel all over the canal. And the RCR were there, so we didn't really feel like getting the camera out and pointing at them. So we're about to go through this swing bridge and then there's a boatyard just the other side so we're going to stop there and get some fuel. I'm talking of sunken boats, my aunt's partner had a narrow boat about 20 years ago which unfortunately sunk called the Lady Val and he sold it to this boatyard so we might ask if they happen to remember it which is unlikely because it was a long time ago but... Yeah, <laughs> a very long time ago and I don't think we have anything other than the name to go off of so you know. And that's even if the owner's still there, so. I was trying to persuade Michael that this might be, like it's two o'clock in the afternoon, but I was trying to persuade Michael that this might be a nice place to stop for the night. We've got this much room in one liquids tank. <laughs> this much room in one liquids tank is less than we produce together in the day. TMI. TMI, but still this much room. Can't stop. But I'm really missing our, um, the crew that we had on board. Oh, yeah. for the last four days because rocks are hard work <laughs> yeah yeah and, also and it was I so nice them. it was so nice having the family here in the lock before last george found a tennis ball just on the towpath and michael decided to throw it into away george, from the towpath into I, george's mouth and then it bounced onto the top onto the solar panel happened. It bounced from George's mouth onto the solar panel into the canal. Now Michael seems to think that's George's fault, whereas I seem to happened. think it's 
Michael's fault. And I just feel bad for George because he found this new tennis ball and he was really excited and then it disappeared, sunk into the bottom of the lock. So what Not actually to mention happened, how dangerous it was. What actually happened is I'm in the lock and the lock is going down. George isn't being controlled by anybody. He and George brings the ball control. over to me and he's like, can I drop the ball for you? Because he'd been dropping it behind Joe and Joe had been ignoring him. To because it's not the place to play ball. And he brings the ball over to me and he drops it right on the side. So I grab it before it falls into the lock and I throw it over his head at a 45 degree over towards meters and meters and meters of grass and, and behind Joe. And it bounces twice, and George comes around it and knocks it back at 45 degrees. And that's how it goes over the top of the boat and into the water. Very irresponsible. It might have been irresponsible, but it was George's fault that the ball ended up in the water. Now we're going to get accused of having a domestic again. Well, you're the one having it. Not me. Ooh. I'm just... I know which side of this one I'm on. I, it is not my fault that that ball ended up in the water. It's not my fault that the ball disappeared. I, somebody put a hole in it. All right, let's go before we... Um, have a domestic, <laughs> which is going to become a new feature. Right? We're going to have to do a series of videos called Michael and Joe Have a Row. Maybe we should get everyone to vote on who's right on this situation. Whether it's Michael's fault for, for throwing the ball to George or George's fault for knocking it. You get to edit Comment it. below. She gets to edit Comment it. below. It's cheating. I won't edit any of this out. Uh -huh. Comment below whose fault it was. It's George's fault. Michael's fault. Coming. So we made their boat at the last lock and we thought they were coming through this lock but we can't see them. Day 95 of the heat wave. <laughs> We're giving up. I'm told today that it's going to get hotter. Who told you that? In the next couple of days. Um, well, your mom mentioned it, your dad mentioned it, and then um, uh, the guy at the boat yard we stopped at today said it's going to get worse the next couple of days. The guy that I talked to who did the diesel was a real, real nice guy, but he's only been working there for two years. He talked to another guy who's been there a much longer time. He said that boat's been there for like 20 years and it's been sold and resold and everything. And it fit the story of one that came in and was sold to Kevin that was um, sunk. Oh, okay. So, so it was refloated, rebuilt, and renamed. But they're not sure what the original name was. So we're going to have to send photos to um, Tony and ask Tony whether or not this resembles his boat. So basically, we came through a couple of locks with a couple who were a little worse for for libation. Just a little... Uncoordinated. Uncoordinated, yeah. Uh, and in the driving, in the parking, in the getting on and off. I thought he was going to smash into you in the mm. first lock. Yeah. And then, I can't remember if it was the third lock that was set against us. And she, I'd said, I'll finish the one before. So she went ahead. But somehow I got to the lock before her. And then she just sat on the boat while me and Michael set it. Yeah. Like. It was a little bit confusing. But then we got to the last lock. They weren't there. As I drove up, it just looked like the lock was open. And as I drove up, the guy immediately to my right just shouted out to me that he, he'd opened it so he could go down. And I was like, oh, OK, well, I'll go in and I'll push over. He came beside us and we moved down the next two locks with him. Yeah, so that worked so, out quite well. So we yeah. didn't, after lunch, we didn't do a lock alone. Bit of a long day. 
Yeah, it's like half five or something. I didn't realize we'd been quite so long. And we haven't really made it that far, but we have made it to the border of Emil Hempstead. Michael made us come to this mooring because there's an L sign just up there. Because he was like, oh, we've got an inch left in the no, second. Oh, I get day. it. What? No, I get it. Yeah. What do you mean? No, I, uh, now the pain will begin. You, I've got it on video. That's exactly what you said. We've got this much room in one liquids tank. <laughs> this much room in one liquids tank is less than we produce together in the day. It's what I said. And okay. And, and to, 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 to be actually, fair to me, I used our normal method of putting a flashlight on the top and I looked at the amount of liquid that was visible with the flashlight on the top. Turns out we had about 17 inches. Turns out there's some sort of staining on the inside or something. And, and, and uh, yeah, so I didn't actually detach it and see how much was inside of it. I put the flashlight on there and went, okay, it looks like there's only an inch worth of space, so we had to get in. But it doesn't matter, we've pushed on quite far. Yeah. And we'll probably push on again tomorrow, I guess. Yeah, like tomorrow Watford Junction, I think. You it's know. weird being back on the bogey, even though we were only off for like five days. It's, it's a little bit, Yeah. Like, it's like all the rhythm's a little bit off, and, but it's getting there. But headed towards London, Limehouse and the Thames. <laughs> It's up for discussion. We met a man on the train and he was like, oh, it's dangerous, you're mental, don't do that. Comment below, should we go on the tidal Thames from Limehouse to Tettington Lock also? What do we need to know? When's the best time to do it? What do we need? Should I walk? Does anyone want to volunteer to do it with Michael so that me and George don't have to? You'd be like, there are six inches of water. We are going to flood. No, it's not that. It's just the boats that go past, because we will be going slower than most of the boats on the Thames. Yes. And as they go past, they will leave a wake that will come over our whole boat like this. No. Anyway. Oh, boat buoyant. Wake small. <laughs> wake not that small. Wake certainly smaller than five feet. <laughs> yeah. But before we even do that, we've got to do. We've got to work out how to moor on the Regent's Canal. We need to do. The River Lee, we need to do the Paddington yeah. Arm, we and need to do I've the Slough Arm. On my... So, thanks for watching. Um, hope you found it enjoyable. Please like, like comment, comment subscribe, subscribe, click the belly thing, and let us know who was right earlier about the ball. Was it me or Michael? And let us have all the advice you have for the River Thames. Yeah, specifically the River Thames from Limehouse to Devon. Malone, you harrowing little. Where this is in George. They jived in. Where are they? Oh, they're underneath. Oh, yeah. This is the cutest, the tiniest oh, little so moorhen chicks, and they were just chilling out in the water by the side, and this dog came and, and just they, tried to assault them. And they just dived under. I can only see one. No, there's one over there. There's one there, and then the other ones. I hope uh, right there. There it is. Ooh, they can swim, swim those suckers underwater. All right, we got to get the duck food out. And there was a family. That and there was a woman and her kid who walked across the, um, no, skip this one. And train. And we've been running near the train the entire day. Just ignore it. <clears throat> Couldn't ignore it, it was falling into the top of the boat. Keep it then. Well, I might have, maybe should have kept it. All right, let's go. Oh. Still her fault. What? It was not my fault. It was your fault. No, it's not your fault. I thought you said it was George's fault. It was George's fault. Now I'm graduating it up. <laughs> we met a couple. George, why are you such a nincompoop? He's a nincompoop. Sit. Don't you look at me and wag your tail, young man. Probably safer to have two people, but not when one of them's going, Oh my god, we're gonna die! The entire time. And I completely agree, and you have a spider on your forehead. Can you get it? Okay,